uh, Mr. President, you are coming to India at a time when there is a war raging virtually in our backyard. And you must have memories of aerial bombardment of your country during World War II and this uh, relentless bombing of Iraq and Kuwait. I wonder how you as an individual and your people, how they react to this allied effort to get Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait. I think our own history teaches us uh, a lesson in various senses. One is that from time to time it is absolutely necessary really to resist an aggressor or a tyranny or some kind of barbarous behavior uh, between nations. This is what my country had to face during the Second World War, uh, a war that was started by my country under its leadership of Hitler. And uh, that was um, a decision taken in principle that could not be escaped. On the other side, any war might include the sacrifice of innocent people and the destruction of life and culture and places of civilization. And uh, therefore the decisions to be taken with what kind of means you have to serve your principles is among the most burdensome uh, that, that exist for uh, political leaders. And uh, we do hope that in any crisis and in any war, political leadership will be enlightened in its taking very seriously uh, whether the means uh, that are being applied in a specific situation really can be uh, responsibly uh, carried into action in connection with the aim that is I believe our common aim as represented by the uh, resolutions of the United Nations. There is some very casual talk about tactical possibility of tactical nuclear weapons being used in this conflict. What would be Germany's position should that happen? Well, I don't think it is going to be used and uh, I think it is out of question uh, for any reason one might think of. Uh, I think the superiority uh, of uh, the forces uh, that have started uh, to carry out the United Nations resolution is evident and uh, what we do hope is that not only the war will end as soon as possible but that it will not enlarge neither in region nor in means that are applied. Just yesterday I was reading somewhere a statement by you which is of great, great interest to us in India. Uh, you said India and Germany, something about India and Germany having a permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. Could you elaborate on that theme, sir? Because it would be of great interest to viewers back in India. Well, I didn't... Uh um, say anything uh, concrete as to the institutions of the United Nations, I rather uh, dealt with what in my view would be the fu uh, future tasks of the United Nations. The United Nations have been founded at the end of the Second World War by those powers that were in a position to act at that time and that is to say the victorious powers. Uh, that was quite understandable and legitimate. In the meantime, the main tasks in a global sense have emerged um, being under development and hunger and need uh, in parts of the southern hemisphere, uh, the ecological crisis that uh, the whole uh, earth is confronted with, that is to say the main tasks which we have to cope with now have not even been known at the time when the United Nations have been founded. Therefore, if we experience 
a United Nations uh, in 1990 as being able to act together uh, in order to uh, keep up the respect for international law. Uh, and if we want that the United Nations will be an active force in, in the years to come, the United Nations will have to prove to be able to cope with those new problems. And in that respect, I think in the first place, such an enormously great uh, country like India is perhaps the best example uh, for a test uh, for the United Nations uh, to show what they are able and willing to do. Uh, and uh, again, I would like to say it's not my task uh, to make proposals as to institutional changes or further developments. Uh, I want the United Nations um, seen to be strengthened. Uh, I want my own country uh, to take up its proper share in uh, responsibility uh, for coping with those problems. And I think uh, Indian-German uh, contact and uh, relations and exchange of, uh, of aims and experiences can contribute uh, to what both our countries uh, can give an, as an advice to the future of the United Nations endeavors. Well, this is the first state visit by the president of reunified Germany to India. What, in your view, is the importance of this visit? Well, in the first place, uh, I follow the invitation of your president, whose visit to my country um, a year and a half ago uh, still is vividly remembered here. It was a highly successful uh, visit, and a visit uh, which uh, really comes to the credit of the personality of your president. And I'm very much looking forward to meeting with him again and to exchange uh, views as to our common tasks. Uh, secondly, I think, uh, and that has very much to do with, with what we have just discussed a minute ago, I think uh, both in the needs and in the possibilities uh, of our two countries uh, is very much to be found uh, as to rather the future development and not so much the prolonging of uh, past uh, ways and means of handling world affairs. We have, as you know, and that is my third point, a very deep going uh, connection between India and Germany. Many scholars, uh, very many young people from Germany go to your great country, spend some time there, are deeply impressed by their experience, both by the need and by the spiritual strength of Indian thought, and uh, come back enriched in a way which you can find everywhere here in, in, in my country. So many people speak about India and about their experiences in India. But apart from um, those immaterial uh, fields of relations, of course, we also have a very active uh, cooperation in um, uh, science, technology, and industry and trade. And uh, fortunately, our trade relations have developed favorably. There is a balance in, the tr in, 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 in trade uh, that has always been a burden for India that it was imbalanced. Uh, this has been overcome in the meantime, and uh, therefore I look very much forward to be able to get my own impressions in Delhi, in the south uh, of your country, in Madras, and in Bombay, where the economic people are mainly gathered uh, for the Indian-German relations. Now, there is a school of thought in India which seeks a special relationship with Germany, particularly in the economic sphere. Now, what can be done to put greater content into, into this concept of a special relationship? Well, I think there are various fields on all of which we have already been uh, uh, active, but uh, that can be further developed. 
if you look at the economic relations, uh, we are heading in Europe for a uh, market uh, in the European community, which from time to time is met uh, with uh, certain fears as to uh, that it might become a kind of fortress. Uh, I think uh, Germany is not the leading power in the European community, but it will certainly lead all uh, endeavors and movements inside the European community to keep it open, uh, and especially also to keep it open in the direction of India. Uh, we cannot live otherwise than by a real open market and by an open philosophy also uh, of our society. Uh, I think in that respect uh, Germany might uh, be of some use uh, also for general Indian interests in the European direction. Uh, as far as culture is concerned, we are very much looking forward to a kind of Indian cultural festival uh, starting uh, later this year uh, in India. I am quite sure that it will find an enormous uh, acceptance uh, over here. And uh, it is always good to have various levels uh, of life uh, tied together. Uh, and uh, those various levels, not just uh, a financial or a material or only uh, uh, a scientific uh, kind of tie, is the most healthy one uh, to produce something like, well, a special relation. Right. Now, Germany will be at the heart of post-1992 Europe. What then will happen to your so-called special relationship with countries like India? How will that affect our bilateral relationship? Well, I think uh, we share uh, the notion uh, adopted by the United Nations as to the aim of the Gulf War. Kuwait has to be uh, freed again uh, we want to have as quickly as possible an end of the war and we have to do everything in our power so that out of that war not a new north-south crisis uh, or a new north-south tension is emerging. On the contrary, uh, we must see as to how far there are already uh, existing, uh, deep-going uh, problems, uh, deep-reaching problems uh, in uh, that area, which will have to be overcome in order to, to learn something from, uh, from, the, from the motives and, and, and from, the, from the origins uh, of this uh, um, crisis. And in fact, we can work together, not only for reconstruction work in a material sense, but for a far-reaching conception uh, of political cooperation between North and South as to be learned uh, from that Gulf War. India, of course, is particularly affected by so many Indians who have been working uh, there and uh, uh, who now have to find a new living or uh, who might wish and uh, be prepared to return. Um, I'm very keen uh, to learn uh, what uh, Indian government uh, and uh, Indian politicians and Indian society is uh, planning in that connection. Uh, we do hope that the war will be over soon. All the more we will have to be prepared for the post-war uh, rebuilding work. And again, this is a common cause. Mr. President, what do you think are the Allied war aims? Uh, withdrawal from Kuwait or the destruction of Iraq's military capacity and perhaps even the removal of President Saddam Hussein from power? One, one gets the sort of shades of of opinions from various parts of the world. Where do you stand in this scheme? Uh, we are here a few days before uh, this conversation uh, is going to um, run in India. Uh, 
I am no prophet. I don't know what kind of events will have taken place uh, in the meantime. But uh, at the point of our conversation, uh, we know that again, Saddam Hussein, who really had the key to end that war, uh, denied that chance. And uh, I really believe that uh, it's no good discussing uh, differences uh, as to how to interpret the United Nations aims as long as there is the need to confront an aggressor who is absolutely unable and unwilling to understand that it is he who has to remove the reason for the outbreak of that war. So the United States and Great Britain seem to have some ideas uh, which they have outlined vaguely on new structures for peace in the Gulf area and the whole Middle East area. What are your ideas on this new structures for security and peace in that area? I think um, the main task in that region as in any other region in the world is that solutions that will be sound must come out of the region itself. Uh, this is what uh, German policy has always been after and as far as we can be of any service uh, for regional, uh, for the approach to regional solutions, we will be ready to do so. There is a number of problems linked together in the Middle East, as we all know, and it will be rather difficult to deal with them all in one great global conference. Uh, therefore, let's uh, follow one step after the other and let's support any constructive, peaceful means for regional solutions. Now, Germany has just signed a friendship treaty with the Soviet Union. What will be the impact of this treaty on, on the new structures for peace in this part of the world? Um, Germany has followed uh, a policy of detente for now almost 20 years. Uh, while we could not envisage in the early 70s that great change of policy in the, inside the Soviet Union, I think Germany did contribute by its own intentions to uh, a slow but steady coming down of the Cold War. This is among the main preconditions for a United Nations to be able to act together as we have uh, witnessed uh, late in 1990. Uh, as to the security, I think uh, every country will remain in need to be able uh, to stand up for its own defense. Otherwise, it will not be taken seriously by any kind of peace policy. But at the same time, um, um, alliances or other arrangements for uh, defense will have to be open and not be directed against any particular uh, potential uh, uh, other nation. Uh, and in that sense, I think security policy, both in Germany, also uh, as in the Atlantic Alliance, will be very open and uh, will have the task of lead constructive uh, conversations with those who formerly have been regarded as potential enemies. So the one final question, because I believe I've run out, my time has run out. NATO, you, you talked about security structures and you said that now in the post-Cold War area, now that the Soviet threat has more or less uh, diminished, um, uh, what is the new role for NATO? Is NATO required at all? Well, we have reached arrangements for reducing our armaments very considerably. We, the Germans, are reducing our own uh, army by uh, at least one third, which is quite something. Uh, we have uh, also treaties for arms control between East and West. And in an atomic age, we always must face uh, the insight that 
there is security only to be reached together. Uh, therefore, arms control and uh, disarmament uh, treaties don't simply serve the purpose of controlling the other side, but of cooperating with the other side um, uh, so that everyone stays in respect vis-à-vis uh, -vis the other and uh, sees to it that no movement with any aggressive uh, intention uh, can uh, take place uh, uh, without anybody noticing it, everybody noticing it. I think that is a new age of security. On a lower level of armament, on a lower level of uh, armed forces, and on a better, uh, in a better atmosphere of cooperating. Uh, if we achieve that, we will really come closer to peace. Now, there seems to be some difference of opinion between the Soviet Union and Washington on the Gulf War, for instance. There is a peace initiative and there are all sorts of reactions to it. Now, does this place any strain on your relations with either Moscow or Washington? I think Germany has contributed to a cooperation between Washington and Moscow as seen in the behavior of the United Nations Security Council during the last months. This is one of the contributions of German policy which we want to follow up also in the future. Therefore, it does not put any strains on us, but it uh, simply describes our share of responsibility and it doesn't change our relations either to Washington or to Moscow, which are not in any sense comparable, obviously, <laughs> uh, but uh, which have to be constructed in, uh, in the interest uh, of our global talks. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs>